Hello, welcome to The Mentored Engineer. In this video, we are going to be looking at the four components that every hydraulic system must have. All right, so in this one, we're going to talk about the reservoir and the pump. In our next video, we're going to talk about relief valves and filters. All right, so let's talk about reservoirs. Reservoir is a large container of oil. The general rule of thumb is uh, whatever your flow rate is, you need three times of that in hydraulic oil storage. So if I have a 10 gallon per minute uh, flow rate, I need 30 gallons a minute in um, oil storage. All right, so that's, that's a lot. Um, if, and that doesn't hold up very well in my world. Uh, so for example, um, I have that log splitter. It's got an 11 gallon a minute pump when it's doing free flow. Uh, it's only got a two gallon tank. So um, you know, it doesn't hold up. Um, you know, there's no heat buildup, uh, which is one of the main reasons that reservoirs are so large is they want to make sure that um, you have a way to dissipate that heat. All right. So with the log splitter, mostly I'm just pushing a cylinder in and out. That's where most of my flow is going. I want to make that quick, but I'm not building up any heat and pressure. In fact, when I am building up heat and pressure, it's when I'm actually contacting the piece and then pushing through the knife. Uh, and that's the only time I can uh, get a a uh, bigger or uh, get more heat generated by the system but even then I'm still doing work so it's not just heat all right so uh, at that point my flow rate goes from I can't remember I think it's uh, 11 gallons a minute down to like one and a half or two so then I'm at a one-to-one -one ratio which I'm at least on the right side of the uh, the equation I at least have a ratio where uh, the flow rate is um, equal to the tank size okay so at that point, um, there's other things to consider. Uh, as I mentioned, heat generation is, is one of them. Um, but if I have a lot of heat generation, adding a lot more oil doesn't seem like a good uh, idea to me. Um, a better thing would be to add a heat exchanger if I have that problem. Uh, it's a lot simpler, cheaper. I can um, control my temperature of my fluid a lot better than trying to just add more oil and hope that's a big enough heat sink that it'll work. Uh, the other thing is um, if I have large cylinders, especially ram cylinders, um, that could be a problem. Uh, for example, I just designed uh, some very long cylinders to be powered. And uh, when they're fully extended, um, the differential in um, oil in the cylinders is 45 gallons. All right, so if I only have a 30 gallon tank, uh, I'm going to run out of oil about halfway through that and uh, I'm not going to be able to fully extend those without uh, bleeding the pump dry. Uh, so I'm going to need a much bigger tank for that. So in that case, if I have you know, a 10 gallon flow rate, but I need 45 gallons uh, of oil, I probably should be looking at about an 80 gallon uh, tank for this application, if not bigger. All right. so. Uh, that, that kind of covers uh, the size of a reservoir. Uh, the physical size uh, and shape would be the next thing. Um, I like a tall tank, and I like it for the reason of uh, my passes in mobile equipment. So as uh, I tilt and I uh, move this thing, a tall tank will still have a lot of heat or a lot of oil um, in, its, in its vertical direction, all right? Um, if I have a very wide tank or a very long tank, um, as I tilt, I may not have any oil in one end or the other, depending on where I put my suction. If I'm, you know, traveling downhill and my suction line is up at the top, I might not get any oil in that. Plus, if it's not a very tall tank, I may actually be spilling oil out of the top. Uh, so I don't want to do that. So I like a very tall tank with a very um, narrow base. Uh, I would say. I would start off with a cube and then add height as I needed uh, to get to where I want it to be. So looking at what actually makes up a reservoir, uh, we're looking for several things. Um, the first of all would be some way to drain the tank. Uh, if you buy a pre-made tank, they're going to have this. I like putting a vol valve on it so that uh, I can drain it by adding a hose to it and I can shut the thing on and off. I don't have to get covered in oil doing it. So on your section line, you're going to want to have it sized for no more than five foot per second of fluid motion in that. 
Uh, anything more than this, you can start to cavitate your pump. Uh, so you want to keep that, that line size big and the oil f flowing very uh, slowly. All right, one of the things you're going to want on there is a suction strainer. Now this uh, just filters out the big stuff. If you imagine making pasta, uh, you wouldn't want to, you know, drain it with cheesecloth. You want to drain it with something a little bit bigger in holes. You keep your pasta in the, the, the bowl and the water goes out. Same thing with this. All right, we want to keep uh, major chunks of stuff uh, out. We don't want to filter the oil at this point. All right, and a benefit here is if you get a magnetic one, um, you can, all the parts that are steel will be magnetized. And if you have a steel tank, even better, the whole tank will be magnetized. And what happens is any iron parts, uh, particles in there will stick to the side of the tank, all right? And they won't get sucked through the system and wreak havoc on everything else in your system. All right, so that's one benefit of a steel tank as opposed to a plastic or aluminum or whatever other material you might use. All right, so um, you also want to be able to clean your tank out. So when you drain it, uh, you want to get in there and you want to wipe it out with some uh, towels and stuff like that. Uh, but you got to be able to get your arm in there, or preferably both arms. Uh, I've actually seen tanks so big that you can uh, walk in them. Um, so what, what, what happens here is you, you, there's usually a gasket uh, with several bolts and you can remove those and uh, go in there and you can clean it out and then replace that. Make sure it's uh, you know, uh, good. I per personally like to have the uh, clean out accessed from the top. Uh, that way you don't have to worry about the gasket seal as much as you do on the side. All right, so one of the last things here is the breather assembly. And a breather assembly is where you're going to fill your tank and where you cap it off to keep uh, stuff from coming out. Uh, it's kind of like your uh, gas cap on, the, on your car. Uh, there's one major difference. Uh, you know, a gas can on a car is now pressurized. Uh, so as you're uh, taking fuel out, you're replacing it with uh, pressurized air uh, coming back. Um, with a hydraulic tank, um, that level is going to change a bunch. Um, so as you're extending and retracting cylinders, uh, it's going to go down and up. Uh, what you don't want to have happen is have a locked system where you have to overcome that air pressure. So a breather is like a gas cap, but it's got an air filter in it so that it allows air to come in and out and it filters it at the same time. So um, what you want to remember there is to um, you know, keep that clean, uh, clean the area around it before you open it to add more oil. So the area I worked in, we had a lot of um, chainsaws working around. So you had sawdust and uh, you know shavings all around, and uh, you never wanted to open up that breather filter um, with with all that around. So we'd make sure that it was very clean around that, and then we'd open it up and add oil or check the levels, whatever we we're going to do at that point. Okay, so moving on to pumps, um, there's there's basically three different types of pumps. You have gear pumps. You have vein pumps and you have piston pumps. Now a gear pump is a positive displacement pump. So every time I rotate the shaft, I'm getting oil out. And that's you know very simple. It's, it's the simplest pump you can buy. Uh, vein pumps come in both fixed displacement and variable displacement. Uh, so you you know they, they'll behave like a gear pump or they can behave like a piston pump, which is a variable displacement pump. Alright, and we could uh, spent a lot of time talking about those, and I won't in this episode. All right, well, that's all we have time for today. Um, thank you for watching this episode, and I hope it was helpful to you in designing your next hydraulic system. Thank you.